Well, what happened at the American Neurological Association? But I'd like to uh, boil down that meeting to a few points that I think you'll find to be very interesting, maybe even startling. You probably have read endlessly that PSA is controversial. Well, I'm happy to tell you the people that know the most about PSA or the American Neurological Association, and they fully endorse its application. What that means, it means looking at people who are in, at risk, at risk for prostate cancer in this case. It also has the benefit of early detection. Now, let me ask you, when you think of medicine, do you think of it as entertainment? And when somebody says they're going to treat you, don't you want that to be based on science? So give me a little leeway here. Doctors are scientists, right? Now you tell me, when's the last time you ever heard of a scientist in his area of interest having too much information? Ever? Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Is it the only test we rely on? Absolutely not. Is it appropriate every time? Absolutely not. But is it appropriate tool for the urologist to work with his patient group, just like this group in this room? Absolutely yes. Early diagnosis is the key to the treatment of cancer as we move forward. So long story short, the AUA endorses PSA, and so the next time you hear this controversy, think about scientists and having too much information. Turn the page, change the channel, or go somewhere else. Here's what the AUA is focused on. The biggest problem in prostate cancer is men between these age groups of 55 and 64. And if you can make an early diagnosis, you can turn that problem into a non-problem. Clearly, early diagnosis makes sense. All right, let's talk about one of these things that was new and hot. This is called the REDUCE study. Now, like every eponym, it has certain meaning, and it has to do with the content of the study. Uh, dutesteride. Have you ever heard the word finasteride? Well, if you haven't, another name for it is proscar. Dutesteride blocks the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Prostate cells and prostate cancer need high test too, but they need high test testosterone, and that's called dihydrotestosterone. Finasteride and dutesteride block the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Dutesteride, in a four-year study, which is similar to the Proscar or Finasteride study, prevents the development of prostate cancer in 25% of the group study. In other words, in the control group, the evolution of prostate cancer to that group who were not taking dutesteride was 23% higher. Let's call it 25, we'll remember it better. And in the group that did take it, it was 25% lower. I think that's worth knowing, don't you? And you heard it here, and I doubt that you've heard it before, but I can assure you, you'll hear it again. Provenge, what could that be? One of those medical names. This is a medication that stimulates the immune system. The principle is that when people do have prostate cancer, have gone through the ladder of treatments that we know work, and then have resistant or metastatic disease, at that point, we're usually in a mode of just trying to make the best of a bad situation. Well, guess what? We now have a drug that works in that situation. Is it perfect? No. Is it beneficial? Yes. And will it get better? You can bet your bottom dollar on it. Let's just look at one thing. 
Cepulosal tea, which is really what ProVeg is in the scientist's mind. These are controlled studies that looked at this drug over 24 months. Here's the treatment arm. Here's a control group. You can see that difference for yourself. The percent survival was higher in every group. Back for a moment to the diagnosis of prostate cancer. Here's the colon, and here's the ultrasound probe, and there's the prostate, and by the way, there's a little lesion in the prostate. This is representative of a cluster of prostate cancer cells. Dr. Folkman came up with the concept of angiogenesis, is a product of the growth factor of neoplasm, new cells, blood vessels grow in to those cells to support their growth, and then more cells grow, and the tumor gets bigger. You know the security system, and you can't figure out how to get into your computer, there's always a back door. We've got a back door. These are bubbles. They're very special bubbles, and they're actually part of a dye. But one thing ultrasound doesn't do, which most other uh, hasn't had the benefit of, as many other imaging studies have, is contrast, which lights up things you're looking at. There's a prostate cancer in this prostate. This is grayscale ultrasound. This looks a little different than this, doesn't it? You see how it's kind of protuberant and sticks out beyond the borders and this is kind of smooth? Is there a problem? Do you see that? Well, guess what? If you use this bubble technology, this lights up like a flashlight in the dark. You know what that means for prostate cancer? That means if we diagnose it early enough, use PSA and other markers that probably will come along to replace PSA, the idea of taking the prostate out and throwing it away probably is going to stop being something you hear about every day. Now, I've taken out well over a thousand prostates, radical prostatectomy, and I did it because I knew it was necessary and appropriate, and I believe to this moment that it was. But at the same time, we have to look and say, what tools do we have, and what does the future really have for us here? And now that we can identify early evolution of prostate cancer and find it, see it, identify it, put a biopsy needle into it and have a pathologist say, here it is, and right next door there's none. You know what that opens up? It opens up the concept of focal therapy. You ever heard that before? When's the last time you heard the term radical mastectomy? You all know about breast cancer, right? Well, that was a very common term not too many years ago. Do you remember? Radical mastectomy. Think about the last time you heard that word. It's been a long time. Why? Because we got better at imaging the breast, we got wise and diagnosed it early, and what do we do today? You know what the word is, don't you? Lumpectomy, right? We'll start doing lumpectomies of prostate, and then we'll stop talking about urinary incontinence, which, by the way, is very minimal if you do a radical prostatectomy and do it right, and we'll talk, stop talking about impotence caused by prostate cancer surgery, which, by the way, is very minimal if you do it right, because we won't have to take the prostate out. Five years from now, I guarantee you that we're not going to be inking prostates. And, and it all came very clear within the last 30 days.